All right, so uh, one of the things that I'd like to demonstrate is the capabilities of this ship where it really shines, and that is in scanning down signatures. Now, uh, the way that we do that is through probes. And I'm going to begin by launching some probes. One, these are scanner probes. Two, I've launched. Three, four, and five. Five is all I need to find most anything. I can actually f launch more than that because of my skills. But for the purposes of this demonstration, five is sufficient. Um, once I've done that, I can go ahead and cloak. And the sound effects for that cloaking device is cool. I, I know you're not able to hear that, but it just kind of goes and you're gone. <laughs> so. Uh, I can move these probes around using my scanner. So I'm going to open the scanner. And I have the scanner placed in this particular position because I was using it before for the directional scan. And I'm going to want to do the system scanner. So I'm going to put it down in the bottom right hand corner because I need this area to move the probes around and align them where I need them. So I'm going to move to map view. Once I go to map view, I want to be uh, in the solar system map. Make sure that it is not the star map, but it's the solar system map. And um, go ahead and minimize the world map control panel. Uh, I'm going to left click and drag so that I'm looking at the top view. And then I'm going to use the scroll wheel to bring the view out further away from the center. I'm going to select all of my probes by clicking on the top one, holding down the shift key, and clicking on the bottom one. And then I'm going to right click that selection and I'm going to select scan range 32 astronomical units. Okay, that's going to bring it to the f most macro, the widest angle scan range for each of these probes. Now I can position all five of my probes so that I have one going at each compass direction. One going up, one going down, and one left and right. Okay. Now I'm going to left click and drag to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. So we've, we've got five bubbles here, one in the middle, and four at each of the polar regions, one at each I at the uh, compass directional regions. Now I can s zoom in a little bit at this point and we can kind of see I've pulled these away so that there is some overlap in the middle. And then I will click on the analyze button. The analyze button with or without probes will return results if there are anomalies it will return those results as positively f identified found results you don't even have to have probes out but for cosmic signatures on the other hand these require a little more effort to isolate and identify the exact coordinates all right so let's give a uh, you a brief uh, overview of what the results I'm looking at here mean. Okay, the circle result, a uh, linear circle 
that identifies a positive hit on a location somewhere along that circle. Um, that basically means that two of my probes, likely this probe and this probe, picked up a signal, whereas the other three or the other four didn't, or the other three didn't. Um, and, and it's identified a location right there. That's the circle. The dot location here is a positive match with three or more of my probes, and it is identified positive location, specific location. Now we can select one or the other of these signatures. I will pick the one that's a dot location, and I will click right, right click on the signature that I want to keep and ignore other results so that I can focus on one at a time. And then I will center my middle one by holding down the shift key and left clicking and dragging it around so that it's centered on that location. But I also have to make sure that it's centered vertically as well, up, so up and down, and it is. And then again, like I say, for, for manipulating this, you're, right, you're left clicking and dragging it. Uh, and in order to move it right or left, you right click and drag to move it up or down or left or right to center the view where you want it. And then I will re uh, I will reanalyze. Actually, what I'll do is I will shift, and I will select it till this bubble highlights. See how that's highlighted there? And I will left click, and I will drag. I'm holding down shift as well, so that I manipulate. When I change one, I change all of them. That's what shift does. Shift means if I move one, I move all. Okay. Uh, and then I will hold down the Alt button, and I'll pick one of the area arrow locations, and I will move it up so they're closer together. What that does is it basically says uh, move everything towards the center point or away from the center point by making the mouse move up or down or up or down, whatever, whichever direction. It will go towards the center point. And that makes it easier to, to zero in on a particular um, location. And then again, I'm scrolling in and right-clicking and dragging it so that it's in the middle of the screen so I can see it easier. And then I'll click Analyze again. And I will repeat this process of scanning, getting a result. Now, sometimes there are two results. This just means that a combination of probes got different conflicting results, and, and so it shows me two possibilities for the actual result. And what I like to do is I like to, to center that in the general vicinity of those, those two. Uh, the true point is usually somewhere in between those two, so that's kind of what I I like to do is I like to center the overlap onto that result and then hit analyze again. I don't like to have multiple results. It makes it more difficult to scan down or narrow down because then your 50-50 chance, one of those is correct, the other one isn't. And actually, that narrowed it, narrowed it down to kind of what I thought, somewhere in the middle there. So I will narrow it again by holding down Shift and and reducing the field, and then I will zoom in again. positive 100%
it'll tell it'll turn green when it's 100 percent so we know this is this cosmic signature known as unstable wormhole I can right click this result and I can save the location as a bookmark and I usually keep the standard label we know it's an unstable wormhole use it, keep it in my personal folders uh, personal locations folder and then click submit and uh, I've saved a bookmark to uh, an unstable wormhole that I have discovered uh, those wormholes will stay open for about a 24-hour period before they uh, collapse. They are unstable. Uh, they will not last more than that. Um, so that's it. Uh, we have found uh, and identified and uh, bookmarked a location using our probes. Uh, when you're done, recover my probes. They warp back to your ship and land in your cargo hold. Shut down the map by clicking on that button again. Or, yeah, that's that's one way to do it. Um, I don't need my scanner anymore. I found what I was looking for. Uh, I, I can remain cloaked. And we can go take a look at what we found. This is an unstable wormhole. We're going to warp to location within uh, within 10 kilometers, we can warp to zero if you want. It's not going to be a problem. But we're going to warp to 10. It's because if I get too close to it, it will decloak me. So if I want to stay cloaked, I come upon it cloaked. So here's here's the wormhole. That's what it looks like. Ooh, the mysterious. One of my previous um, videos that uh, I sent you, <laughs> we went through a wormhole. I don't know what's on the other side of this wormhole. This is a K162, which means it's an exit. That doesn't tell me where it goes. Um, the only way for me to identify where it goes is try to see where it goes by going through it. And I'm not going to go through it, mostly because I'm not really interested in doing a wormhole by myself. If I were to do a wormhole, I would want to bring some help because it is very possible that wormhole could lead to a location that is occupied and there are people in there that can find you and <laughs> kill you and if you're killed it can be bad especially since I'm not in a clone that I want to get killed <laughs> this this is a pretty valuable clone uh, if I wanted to take chances if if I was going to be taking chances I would jump into a clone that didn't have implants that were fairly expensive I would have no implants if I wanted to go and take ch chances and risks. But that's the wormhole that we scanned down. Like again, that's uh, that's what this ship does. It does it well. That's that's it in a nutshell. Uh, the major strengths of this ship is, is it's a ca capability of scanning down stuff. You definitely want to have one of these if you're in a wormhole. Keep it safe though, because like I said, this ship has very limited capabilities as far as uh, offensive or defensive. Um, it's just mainly for uh, scouting and recon, you know, covert stuff, being sneaky, getting information, intel, under intel or whatnot. Um, it's great to take one of these ships down uh, Nullsec Pipe and see what gate camps are there and what positions they're in and set up bookmarks for your fleet to come through and have be able to avoid getting trapped and killed. So this is Jin Kadar and we'll talk to you later.